Hello, my name is Daniel Suarez. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Professor Mohamed Hafez's group in the University of Maryland. Hi, I'm Benny Gao. Uh, I'm a third year graduate student in Professor Hafez's group. Today, we want to share with you some of our recent results in TMD heterobite layers. In particular, we're going to show you how one can harness the properties of these particular devices to host mixed populations of fermions and bosons and one can and we demonstrate also how one can create mode insulating states for excitons in these kind of devices so the the formalism that is going to be underlying the our experiment is the Hubbard model that describes interacting particles in a put periodic uh, a potential in it is composed by two terms a term t that represents the hopping of the particles in the in periodic potential and a term u that accounts for short range interactions between the particles so this model is particularly important because it describes many uh, ma many of the effects in the condensed matter physics that come from interactions in the in between the particles and in particular uh, the it is also of uh, high interest the um, superfluid to mode insulator transition that can be described by this model as well. One material that has been demonstrated that can confine the Banner orbitals and hence reach uh, the regime in which the transition can be observed is transition metal digital cogenates. They are composed by one transition metal at two chalcogen atoms in a honeycomb array that it is monoatomically thin and they, it, it has been demonstrated that one can harness the properties of these materials to increase or to reduce the hoping term uh, of the Hubbard Hamiltonian to m m enhance the interactions in the material. One way to do it is, well, we start from a 0 0.3 nanometers crystalline structure and then we can use a second monolayer of a different material with a slight mismatch in the in the crystalline structure. And by stacking those two together, we fundamentally change the period, the crystalline structure of the material, allowing the formation of a moire lattice that is going to be about eight nanometers of unit cell. Now, the way to, this allows then to create to create two kinds of, of excitons. In particular, we're going to focus on the interlayer exciton that is going to be composed by an electron in the tungsten disulfide, in our case, and tungsten diselenide. And one can manipulate then the fermionic, so the electronic density in the material by using top and bottom gates. So this, the electrical gating of the device will set the density of electrons and hence the fermionic density in the material. But at the same time, one can use an optical pump with a, with an intensity I to create a plasma of electrons and holes in the material that they, that are going to decay non-radiatively and then bind together, forming the mentioned interlayer excitons, which are bosonic particles. So the intensity of the optical pump will determine as well also the bosonic the the bosonic density uh, in the in the uh, structure. So we have then two independent mechanisms to control the density of fermions, in this case electrons, and bosons, in this case excitons. The interplay between these two parameters will allow us to map uh, uh, the phases that can be achieved in this material by the number of electrons, so the, the electronic filling factor, and the pumping intensity. So for example, we can, in the limiting cases, we can have an empty structure where, it, where some, so a, a few excitons are, are created and then they recombine relatively, and this optical signal is gonna be uh, our, the signal we analyze in our, in our experiments. But this exciton can now be in presence of a fermionic mode insulator among the population of the system with electrons. The energy required for this, for, for the formation of this exciton 
uh, is a factor u above the um, the excitonic energy of this case because the repul the, the exciton has to overcome the repulsive energy between these the particles in one single lattice site. Now we can also have the situation where we have a mixture between excitons and electrons, and then we can have repulsive interaction between two excitons in one lattice site or an exciton and an electron in the site. So the interplay between these two parameters will create this phase map where the compressible states are in the are in the center, and along this line we have the formation of mod insulating states. Okay, now let's get into the results. Firstly, let's consider two extreme cases: um, purely electron doping and purely exciton injection. This is a gate voltage dependent PL map at very low pump intensity, uh, such that the exciton population in the system can be ignored. As we increase the electron doping level, we observe the energy transition uh, because of the exciton in presence of a fermionic mod insulator, as we mentioned before. And the energy gap in the PL map can indicate the incompressibility in the system. For purely acetone injection case, we keep the acetone uh, electron doping level at zero. The excess now is the total PL power, which is proportional to the total acetone numbers in the system, um, thus the pump intensity. Uh, at low pump intensity, we have the same population as before. As the pump intensity becomes very high, the second peak starts to show up. That's because of the emergence, uh, em uh, the emergence of the doubly occupied sites in the, where two excitons exist in the same sites. This is consistent with the Bose Harbor model, which proves the existence of the strongly interacting excitons in the system. Uh, this is a video showing us the power dependence PL map. As we increase the power, we fill the empty sites with excitons, thus the electrons needed to fill all the empty sites become less and less, such that the cross points uh, happen at lower and lower gate voltage. Since all the PL map we just showed are normalized, uh, in order to systematically study the physics of the both Fermi mixture, we extract the intensity information of the singly occupied X1, uh, singly occupied side X1 and W occupied excitons X2 using a fitting routine. As you can see, as we increase the electron doping level, the PL emission from X1 gets lower and lower. That's because um, the electron filling factor nu E sets the fill, uh, maximum number of the uh, singly occupied excitons. Same thing happened as we increase the power. Just the cross point happened earlier. We do the same thing for the pump intensity dependent PL map. At zero electron doping level, as we increase the pump power, S1 and S2 population grow up uh, monotonically. However, a new E equal to 0 0.7, uh, or you can consider that 70% um, of the sites are occupied by the electrons. As we increase the uh, pump power, the uh, the X1 emission starts to saturate. That's because there's no more available sites for a singly occupied exciton to exist in the system. So we can say that the saturation of the of X1 also indicates the incompressibility uh, of the system. A new E close to one. Um, the X1 population saturates immediately as we increase the pump power. To further corroborate our observation of um, the existence of the bosonic mod insulator, we perform diffusion measurement. Here, we use a non-resonant pump to generate a bunch of excitons of, uh, at the excitation spots. These excitons can hop to the adjacent sites and then recombine and emit photons from the other sites. 
The diffusion, uh, the diffusion lens depends on the lifetime, hopping strength, etc. Here we show the spectral diffusion map that we have with, uh, with spectral resolution. Our excitation spot here is here. Uh, both X1 and X2 can diffuse. However, as we increase the pump power, uh, notice that the X1 diffusion emission gets much dimmer. Um, remarkably increasing power suppresses the diffusion. So what's the physics of this? At low pump intensity, we only have a dilute gas of acetones, so they are free to move. However, at high acetone density, all the sites are already occupied by one acetone or one electron, so the hopping between, adja uh, between adjacent sites is strongly inhibited. We extract the diffusion lens as a function of electron doping level, a different pump power. In the shaded area, uh, the acetones behave as weakly interacting bosons, where the, where the optical pump indeed enhances the diffusion. And strikingly here, as the, as the dashed line showed, the behavior is fully inverted. Increasing the pump power gives us shorter diffusion lens. Well, the reduction of the diffusion lens originates from the on-site Coulomb repulsion between axions. Let's then summarize our results. We demonstrated the formation of excitonic mode insulating states in a bos fermi mixture by three independent observations. The first one is the formation of an energy gap in the photoluminescence spectrum. The second, the second observation is the saturation of the photoluminescence from singly occupied sites, and the suppression in the exciton diffusion demonstrates that we are in presence of a excitonic mode insulating state. The, it is important to highlight the tunability of the system that allows us to switch between any fraction of boson density to fermion density. And then this opens interesting perspectives because the uh, since we can illuminate our sample with a CW or a pulse laser, we can study then the equilibrium or non-equilibrium physics in this kind of boss fermi mixtures. It is also interesting to study the spin physics and upon the improvement of the fabrication techniques the uh, to reach fractional feelings. And also uh, the correlations, it, we're interested in studying how the correlations from the matter translate into correlations in, in the la emitted light. So the G2 measurement is also one of, uh, is, is also an interest per perspective. Then this is our group at the University of Maryland, the Joint Quantum Institute, our external collaborators, and of course a very uh, special acknowledgement to our funders. Thank you very much.